What's going on, YouTube? All right, I had a lot of people actually uh, message me um, on some of the forums and stuff when they saw about the wiring on the Super A. Um, and I've actually had a bunch of people ask certain questions about how to wire certain things. Um, I've rewired my case tractor, and obviously the Super A is a little different than my case. Um, so all in all, this actually wasn't that hard to wire. It was actually fairly simple um, for going off the wiring harness. Uh, you know, the instructions um, aren't really super, super clear, but they're not bad. Um, these are what I got from Steiner as far as the instructions on how to wire this. This is what came with that new three position switch, which I found it better just to stick with the original four position. Um, that was, this used to be the cutout regulator, and I'm going to get to that in a second. Um, this is the regulator that I ended up using, the voltage regulator, I'm sorry. Um, but first things first, I went ahead and, today's one of those days, got to pour a little bit of whiskey. Um, I like plain whiskey, but sometimes, I'm not a spokesperson for them, bird dog whiskey, awesome choice for a nice chilly day when you're out working in the shop. Um, so today, you know, it's just one of those days. It's cold, it's rainy, it's windy, as you see. You know, just a dreary day. Yeah, gotta love the view still. Of course, in this shop here, I don't have very big windows, which is gonna change when I put in my 40 by 60 one of these days. <laughs> but, so, you'll hear probably the, uh, the overhead door do some vibrating in here, um, just because the wind coming through. We're getting like 40 mile an hour winds in PA today. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a video real fast. Um, nothing crazy, nothing spectacular, but I am going to go through the wiring harness, the numbers on there, where they correspond on the paper. And obviously, if you are going to do wiring, you might want to go ahead and um, obtain one of these manuals. I'm going to move this out of the way before I knock over the whiskey, and then it turns into a bad day. So hang on a second. Got to do first things first. Oh, that's some smoke. good stuff. All right, let me sit this over here so I don't drop it. All right, my bench is an absolute mess. Um, I'll do a quick... Yep, there's a bench. It's a mess. Back over here. Okay. My last video, for some reason, you know, when your brain says, you know, thinks one thing and your mouth says another, I'm not sure why. You, somebody might have noticed, but if they didn't, I don't care. I'm going to notice and say it because I watched the video and I was like, oh, why did I say that? The video was already um, done. It was already uploaded. I'm not changing it. Some reason I was pointing at this last time and I said the mag and I said about the mag be no, this isn't a mag. So that was my my brain was thinking one thing, my mouth said another. No, this is the voltage regulator. This these tractors obviously had what they called a cutout regulator that went here. Um I decided not to uh, put one of those back in when I got this tractor. It had a voltage regulator, you know, mounted to the top. It's wired a little differently, so I stuck with it. Um so Yes, this is a voltage regulator. This is the cutout, and this is the non-cutout. This is the one that I replaced just like it was on here originally. The other one was just beat to crap. Um, one of the nuts that I had was bad, um, so I'm going to pick up a couple new nuts for the top of these terminals. So if this ends up popping off in the middle of the video, just give me a second to find the star washer because I know I'm going to lose it. Um, so what I was saying is if you're going to do wiring on one of these tractors, it's good to go ahead and get yourself... One of the parts catalogs, I mean, they're pretty detailed. It helps out. And as you see, you know, it shows all the wiring. Um, let me open this up real quick for you, for those who don't have one of these books. Over here, they'll have all the corresponding numbers to what you see here. Like if you see, you know, number 12, you'll come over here, number 12. Headlight, conventional assembly for components, see parts list, blah, blah, blah. So it's going to tell you what, you know, the items are. Get yourself a book. Um, it's great to have. It's very useful. Um, as you see, you can skip a couple of pages because it goes into detail as far as everything. Um, all the way down to all the wiring as far as on the side. Um, this is the wiring right here that goes. There's the oil filter. There's your mag. Um, shows the wiring coming up and into your console. And on the opposite side, your air cleaner. So that shows the wiring coming down the other side. Um, and that's what I was talking about. That's a cutout regulator. And like I said, I didn't put the cutout back on. I went ahead and went with the, basically this was a conversion back in, you know, at some point where you can mount the regulator on top. So get yourself a manual. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and move this manual out of the way for the time being. But I'm going to go ahead and bring these papers back over to, actually what we're going to use is, we're going to go ahead and use this one that came from Steiner for right now. 
and that's what I'm going to go off of. So give me a second to get set up, and then I'm going to basically trace the numbers on the wires, show the numbers that were on here, how I wired them to the tractor, and um, I'll probably go ahead and sit the battery temporarily back in the hole and just at least show, you know, the lights, the starter, everything working. And then I'm going to re-explain for whoever didn't watch the last video where these two wires go that are hanging right here. So give me a second, and I'll be right back. Okay. One of the other things I actually, um, for some reason, I'm not sure why I said it. Um, this headlight glass, I said actually that I replaced this glass. Actually, I didn't. These are actually the original factory glass glass. This is the, the guides, as you can see the writing. Believe it or not, um, I cleaned these up. These were actually quite yellow. Um, they would look really bad. Um, they had overspray from the you know some somebody painted this thing a couple times back in the past. Um, they had overspray on the lights. The, these were actually really. Um, I was almost to the point where I was gonna most likely replace them and toss them. I didn't. I cleaned these with lacquer thinner. Um, lacquer thinner and some of the really stuck on paint areas. I used um, acetone. I wiped around it really good, and as you see, they came out like flawless. They are crystal clear. Every single one of these came out perfect. They look like they're brand new. And they're actually not their original. Um, but I did go ahead and here's the backings that were inside there. As you see, they start to tarnish. Um, once they get to that point, there's really nothing you can do with them. They sell chrome paint, stuff like that. Don't bother. Chrome paint doesn't nearly have the reflection of original paint. Um, this, you know, the, the dip that they use in these back in the days, even nowadays, you can't duplicate that out of a rattle can. So for the price, just replace them. They're cheap. Um, and as you see the back of the terminals on these, they had paint all over them and, um, it was just cheap enough to replace them. I can't remember exactly what I paid for these. You can look them up on Steiner. Um, which you can see it just looks so much nicer, so much cleaner replacing the terminal blocks. Nice contrast it actually looks like it's meant to be rather than, uh, oversprayed. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and get to, uh, yeah, here, let me see. I think I got the papers actually to these backings possibly over here. Nah, unfortunately there's no part numbers on these. They're just bags. I'm not sure what these were. Eh, these might have actually been the bulbs. Um, yeah, that might have been the bulbs that came in these packs. Now, if I remember what they are, I'll try to post them in the um, description. But if not, go to Steiner. They have everything for this. So what we're going to do is first, we're going to go ahead and trace um, into here. So I did go ahead and buy a new um, ammeter. This one here has a light that optional in here. I'm going to go ahead and make a jumper wire, tie this into the lights. So when I turn the lights on, it will turn the gauge light on. And there's the replacement gauge that I got. I opted to try to find an ammeter um, with the serial number and all in it, so that way it actually looks a little bit more legit. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, this came off of a seller from Amazon. I mean, I'm sorry, on Amazon, eBay. Um, they have lots of choices to obviously order from, but this came from an uh, uh, eBay seller. And like I said, I liked it because it had the um, part number inside, so it made it look a little better. And... There's that one-off cutoff switch that came from Steiner, as you see. Great switch, looks good, looks original. The fuse has been ordered; that is on its way. Um, hopefully, I should be receiving that by Tuesday. I did explain the cheap one that I ended up getting from Amazon that wasn't worth two cents. Um, couldn't even unscrew the tip, and then it broke trying to get it apart. Yeah, just stick with uh, the Steiner for those. And then I used the switch cover from the three-position switch that I ordered. I wasn't really happy with the way the wiring was coming out. Because honestly, the factory wiring harness was actually set up to go with, this is considered a four position switch um, right here. But this was original to the tractor. And this tractor doesn't have a red light. This tractor only has the white light in the back and the two front headlights. So I'm not sure why factory, this one had a four position. I would decide to go back with it. You can buy the replacement springs and all the stuff for it. Um, but this one actually works. So nothing wrong with it. So when you get the wiring harness, um, well, let me show you. If your wiring harness looks like this, and as you can see, this had the kill switch set up. Um, it had an external coil put on because the mag went up in it. So instead of fixing the mag, just an external coil was put on. I didn't want that. Um, yeah, starter, it worked, but it was very sluggish. I'm going to go ahead and rebuild it at one point and just put it on the shelf. I just didn't feel like rebuilding it now. It was cheap enough to go ahead and get another starter. Um, there's the battery cables. But as you see, the wiring harness has been completely hacked. I mean, everything on this was hacked up. 
nothing was original as far as on the uh, the starter side and the mag side. And then when it comes down to the voltage regulator, there's the one that was on there. And again, as you see, the wires just everything is pretty grody on here. Um, so I decided to go ahead and replace the harness because this one really, personally, wasn't salvageable. It wasn't safe for the tractor. Um, I don't really want to see the tractor get wet uh, or something happen and all of a sudden it catches fire because of shoddy wiring. It was easy enough just to replace it. I am going to have to add this wire here um, to the battery terminal on the voltage regulator. I haven't added this wire yet, so I am going to add one. You won't see one on there now, and I'm going to show you this wire here is right there and that will come off and come on to here um, so I will have to hook that up next so if we start at the beginning when you look at the wiring harness when you get them um, here's a tag here okay so number 38 obviously you can tell it's for the headlights the way it's set up when you stretch this out so you come over onto the paper that they gave you and you look at it look for number 38 Light switch that goes to the left headlamp. Oh. Left headlamp, light switch. Um, I'm going to bring the paper with me so I'm not going back and forth. I'm just basically trying to do this video to show you how easy it is to use this factory wiring. Right headlight, number 46. Number 46. Light switch, the right headlamp. I mean, it's that easy wiring this up. It's, it's really nothing to it. Here is the wire for the... Uh, mag now basically all this wire does right here. It goes to the side of the mag into the uh, screw right here um, This actually follows along and obviously I'm still gonna tie all this up. I haven't tied this up yet I left this loose for the video as you see there's the wiring. Yes, my bungee cord is to hold my battery in a minute you Trace the battery up. To, I mean this wire up to here. It was I believe oh, Let me see which wire was that. Oh, no, I already got it hooked up all right, so you're going to trace that wire was labeled as number 90. And as you see, number 90 goes to here. And if you look in here, let me turn this. See where that is? See that fuse switch? If, oh, let me if I'm going to the right place here. See the fuse hole right there? This is right above it. Come around to here. That's your switch. So what happens is when you pull this out, it goes ahead and opens the circuit up, and then you can start the tractor. When you push this in, technicality, it grounds this out. And when it grounds it out, it actually grounds this out and it acts as a kill switch. Um, so that's what the point of this does and that's what you need to do. A lot of people will bypass stuff on this mag and they will run the external coil, all the crap. Nine times out of ten, before a mag actually goes up, most likely it's going to be this switch. A lot of times this switch will actually go bad. And when that goes bad, you think it's the mag. It's not the mag. Go easy first. Next time, if you guys ever have a problem with your mag, try the switch first. Um, makes it much simpler. You can actually go ahead and, if you want to test it, unscrew this completely and try to start the tractor up. The tractor starts up, you're good. If you got to shut the tractor off, all you can do is just touch a wire from here to something metal not painted on the tractor, ground it out. The tractor should shut down. Very simple. Easy test. All right. Um, let's get back on track here. So in that same harness of the wire that goes under, it comes around. And that part of the wiring harness, as you see, ties into here. So you have, um, this right here is what they consider tracers. So as you see this red, if you see on the um, um, description over here when it says a certain color wire with a tracer, that's your tracer. So it's a white wire with a red tracer. We want to find that particular wire inside of here. And there it is. That is white wire, red tracer. White wire with the red tracer is number 17. Come on to here, number 17. Ammeter to the starter switch. It's a natural wire with red tracers. That's natural with red tracers. Now, what you gotta make sure you look for is one here. It's gonna tell you um, if two wires end up getting tied in together. So as you see, I have number 15 right here that goes to the right side, standing in front of it, the right side of the ammeter is number 15. I went ahead and marked what number 15 I was actually going to, and it's going to go to the fuse body. So when I get the fuse, it's going to go to the fuse body, the little terminal. It's actually going to come off closest 
to the metal. That's where this one's going to go. And then this one right here is going to go to the other side of the fuse. This is going to go to the top post of the fuse. Um, so essentially you'll see me go ahead and right now to do the testing on this last video I showed you. I took these two and I hooked these together with a pair of ice grips. That way it made a complete circuit so I could actually do a test on this because I didn't have that fuse. Um, so you will end up running these two into that fuse right there. But the whole point is you'll see like right here. I have two wires going to the ammeter. Now that's number 15 and that is also number 14. Come on to here. Number 14 ammeter. Ammeter end, same terminal as wire number 15 to the cutout battery side. It's natural with black and red tracers. Natural with black and red tracers. See the tracers on there? So the reason I have the tape on here is because in the midst of wiring, there's no shame to the game. Of if you want to figure out what you have these wires wired to besides reading the instructions, yes, the instructions are very easy. But if you don't want to screw yourself up in the midst of rewiring this whole tractor, if you've never done this before, throw some tape on there and go ahead and mark it. Regulator. That way you know this came from the regulator. It's actually telling you to go ahead and go to the cutout regulator battery side. Let's go over here and I'll show you where the battery side is. I'm not a, a, a school teacher here, so if I'm not teaching this hopefully, <laughs> completely correct, I apologize. I'm just trying to show what I have learned on this, just so everybody knows. All right, so you have, let me see if I can, I don't know if I can get a flashlight in there. You probably won't be able to see this. Um, I'm trying, I'm trying, give me a second here. Hang on, let me see if I can get a light in here. Let me hit pause for a minute. All right, unfortunately I can't really get a light in there to show you. So this terminal here is what they consider F terminal. It actually has an F on the top of um, the generator right here. I'll have an F over here, and then it has like an A on this side, all right? So these wires, it'll show you actually on the diagram of the regulator. Right here, it's going to show you what side to run the wires on. I'm sorry, yeah, so the F is the field. Um, I guess I should have said that. So you have a battery side, you have a field side. That one right there is what I did for my wiring. Number 31 comes up to, let me pull that back out again. That's the field side, all right? So number 31, as you see right there, comes up and it goes to that side of the voltage regulator, field side. Number 31, cut out. Bring that up so you can see it. Cut out generator to generator A. All right. A. Generator A. So 31 is going to generator A. Okay. So that's what I got wired here. Then you have number 36. All right. Number 36. Ammeter to cut out battery generator end. All right. Right there. Battery generator. That's number 36. So that goes down to the wiring harness. So as you see, that right there is it says battery side, okay? Battery side, number 36. So remember that what I'm telling you. Battery side, 36. Let's come back over here. Let's locate that wire. That one right here. That was number 14. See the tracers? See how it's the same color? See how I wrote on there for the regulator? So I know where that went. Number 14. Ammeter end. Same terminal as wire number 15 to the cutout of battery. So as you see, it's extremely simple. Number 36, which is hooked to the generator side, is actually coming up to number 14, which is going to come up to the same thing. And it's telling you battery of the terminal. And it's telling you what color the tracers and everything are. So you know exactly where this goes. Extremely simple wiring harness. Um, once you go ahead and get past the fears of hooking it up, it's not bad whatsoever. The worst part you're going to have is when you get inside the console, it looks like a mess of wiring. Again, follow the diagram. It's not that hard to follow what goes where. Um, so this one here, uh, number three, okay? Number three is going, this is considered a four position switch. Let me get a light in there for you. All right, four position switch. See how that's set up? All right, so number four position switch. Number three. All right, let's find out where number three goes. Number three, light switch to the rear lamp, black. 
See, it's all black. Right there, number three, all black. There's a position on the switch you want to run that to. Right between these two screws here and here, number three. Okay? Again, super simple. There's number 13. And as you see, number 13 is tracing up to here. So let's find out in all black number 13. See? I have it marked. Lights. But number 13 on the paper. Come up to 13. Light switch to number three to the headlamps. Both these headlamps are tied in. And it's telling you to take number 13, and that's the switch end. All black, number three. All black, number three. That's both your headlights, and that's where you want to run your headlights to. To the upper portion, see that went on a little like spring right there? That's the easiest way for me to tell you what it look like. looks like. Apparently the uh, whiskey's kicking in. <laughs> um, and it looks like, see, there's number two on there. So that's where you want to go, right there. All right, so again, it's super simple to hook this up. Now, let's go ahead and figure out, oh, I already told you, okay, so this is gonna go to the fuse. This is number 80, white, and it's black, I'm sorry. Here, let me get that focus back in. Come on. And they call these smartphones. Pretty damn stupid sometimes, if you ask me. All right, black wire, white tracers, number 80. Let's find out where that goes. Number 80. Coil to the distributor, battery ignition only, black with white tracers. Now, what I found out this would go to, this is actually going to go to the fuse because this is going to go ahead and run to the number 15. All right, so let's come up to number 15. Ammeter, same terminal as wire number 14, light switch, same terminal as wire number 70. All right, so wire number 70 was, let's see if we can find it for you. Number 11. Where are you, number 70? Actually, seriously, where are you, number 70? <laughs> Hang on a second. Let me find number 70 and I'll point it out. Ah, I found number 70. Now, the reason I'm not using number 70. See this? This is 70. See that wire right there? Now, it's telling me right there, ammeter, same terminal as 14 to the light switch, same terminal as the number 70 wire. This number 70 wire, see what it says um, right here? Number 70, two ignition switch to light switch, battery ignition only. Battery ignition means that if I was running a coil, I'm not running a coil, I'm running the mag. So this wire on this particular one, since it's a mag, is not going to be used. So this is essentially right now an extra wire. Um, I may go ahead and repurpose this wire right here to run on the terminal from the, um, um, yeah, what the hell side was this? That's the field side, this is the ammeter side or whatever, the battery side. This is actually going to run out, and I'm going to run this up under the regulator. So I'm going to go ahead and repurpose this to use for there. Um, so that's not used. Not really sure what else I can explain on this wiring harness. Um, let me come over to this side. All right, so here's the rear lamp. All right, as you see, there's the wiring harness. It's all black. And again, back here, I decided to use these Velcro strips for the wiring. Let me show you how these come. I think I only paid, I don't know, maybe 10 bucks for this entire stack of Velcro wire looms. Um, it's pretty awesome, actually. They, they're they nice. They um, Sorry, I'm making you sick here. I'm trying to peel one off for you. All right. Trying to do this one hand is sometimes impossible. So as you see, see how they peel off? And then once you peel off... You have the fuzzy side, and then you have the sticky side right here that it sticks to. All you do is just, like this, just wrap it right around. Put it through the hole, wrap it around, tie it tight, boom, done. Look at that, nice and clean. Wiring's out of the way, won't get caught up on the pulleys, won't get hit anything. I have this one running just like I did factory. It goes down under the PTO switch, well, the PTO lever, I'm sorry, comes around. I still have to go ahead and put the um uh, basically the wire cradle back in here this bolt right here for the housing is only loose i'm going to bolt that put it back on there this will actually strap in hold tight and then i'm going to snug this up just a hair more and i'm going to pull that wire in so it follows that console and that stays out of the way for your feet and you won't have any issues of ripping that wire off with your foot but that's how that wire is going to get run um yeah like i said as you see the quality of this wiring harness is beautiful
I went ahead and ordered the um, original style ground strap. And then this is a positive ground system. So this is going to go to the negative side. No. <laughs> I, always, I get screwed up on the positive ground systems. This goes to, I believe, the positive side because um, it's a positive ground. So positive, it gets grounded. The negative side is going to run from the um, positive. The negative side is going to go to your starter over here. Sometimes this can get extremely confusing, but, you know, for the people who don't know, you know, you got your negative on your battery, you got the positive on the battery. So this right here is going to go to your ground strap, the all silver one. This one here is going to go to your starter. All right, so positive ground. Positive. Gets grounded to your console. Apparently I need another drink. Hang on a second. Actually, maybe taking a drink isn't the best thing. Whew. Might make my explaining here a little difficult. I'm going to change this um, angle up too. Here's your starter wire. I'm probably going to go ahead and loosen this up. I might change this. I'm going to go ahead and push this one back that way a little bit. And I'm going to bring this down and then give it a little bit more of a loop and kind of run it up and over. I haven't yet because I still have to get inside here, as you see right there. Um, you got that little lever coming off in front of my fingers. Let me grab my handy dandy light right there. See that little arm right there? That is going to come up to here to that right there and this is for your touch controls say say that's your touch control lever so I haven't changed these yet because once I get the wiring in and I'm happy with everything that works I'm gonna go ahead and put the battery box in sit the battery in it and go ahead and bolt everything up like I'm supposed to and then I'm gonna go ahead and run the rods because it's much easier to have this all not connected while you're trying to work on this especially on the other side Leaving this whole thing open makes it much easier. Um, again, over here, I got to hook all this up right here. Um, this right here is one of your um, the choke rod. I went ahead and drilled mine out um, to go ahead and be able to put a rubber grommelet inside. So when I go ahead and run my um, throttle and my choke rods through and then both sides of the console, as you're pulling it out, it'll help hold a little bit of tension on it so they stay in place. And also, so it doesn't tear the paint off of your rods. So as you see, I went ahead and I Cerakoted these. These are actually Cerakoted uh, graphite black. I didn't want to see the um, metal to metal contact and have these completely and totally tear the paint off. So I opted to go ahead and do something different. Um, I wanted to quiet everything down and put rubber grommets in. Again, very simple, little easy upgrade. Here's the throttle right here. And I went ahead and I hooked that up now. That throttle rod right there. Um, I took this apart as well, painted all the parts individually, and then I took the original spring, um, Cerakoted this with the same glacier that I used for the wheels, put the washer on, put the new cotter pin in, um, and since the bolt shows, I wanted to go ahead and go with a chrome setup, and I went with a lock washer, I mean a lock bolt, so it doesn't vibrate loose, and personally I think it looks nicer, showing right here. But that rod runs on down to your governor, which is right there. As you see, again, looks much better with a little bit of contrast. Cerakote it so it can kind of hold up a little better than actually just using paint. And then have the new cotter running through it, lock it in place. Um, much cleaner. So I'm trying to think if there's anything else on the wiring harness I really have to show you. Um, this is pretty straightforward, honestly. As long as you have a manual where if you get stumped on your wiring and what you have, refer to that service manual. Um, cross-reference that service manual to what they gave you from Steiner and that's pretty much it just go ahead and follow the numbers um, and again if you're getting confused with what wire is tying into what when your tractor as far as your front end go ahead and just take yourself a little masking tape right on there what it goes to and that's it and then when once you get the whole front end all wired up and you get your tail light all set up and you get all your wires brought through the holes um, where they're supposed to come through. As you see, let me get that out of the way. See where it comes through the holes right there? Once you get everything run where it's supposed to be, um, have everything hanging out right here, all ready for you. And then come up into here, and then start following again your diagram, and hook everything up as it's telling you. Makes it much easier. And then you don't have to second guess, thinking, hmm, shit, 
what, what was that wire to go to? I don't remember. And then you got to stop. You got to go back and you got to trace it and come back up. Go back to them. It's it's a hassle. Again, no shame in the game to go ahead and use a little bit of masking tape right on there where it goes. You're good to go. Um, again, like I said, this is actually a pretty simple um, tractor to wire up. Um, I think the last one I didn't go through was right here. I've written that's going to the generator. That's number 11. Number 11 is going to that side of your light switch. See number 11? Let's find out what number 11 is. Number 11, generator, F terminal to the light switch. Again, this is considered the light switch, all right? This light is like a little brain. It, it, all kinds of stuff ties into it. So that right there, lever 11, light switch. See the color of the wire again? White, black tracers, or they'll consider it natural, black tracers. Number 11, natural with black tracers. Let's find out. Let's go to terminal F. Let's see if that wire is coming around here. I only had one beer when I wired this thing up, so I'm pretty sure it's going to the right place. Okay, right here. So you have natural black tracers, number 32. And there it is, F terminal. F terminal is the furthest one to your engine block on your generator. Same color wire. The one here, it says number 32. See where it says 32 right there? Same color wire, number 32. Generator F to light switch. Generator end. See? Generator F. Generator F. Same correspondence as it has on the console. If you follow this, like I said, it makes it super, super easy. Um, don't be discouraged. There's actually another diagram, kind of, I guess I should have shown. That kind of helps out too on one of these switches. So that shows right there. See? Rear lamp lead. See how it's showing in the middle of these two screws? See how they consider it? The four position light switch used with the cutout relay. Well, this one had the cutout relay. That's why this tractor has the four position switch. I opted not to change the four position to a three. So let's go back to rear lamp lead. See that's a middle screw right here? Rear lamp right there. See that middle screw? Number three is the middle screw. So let's go ahead and pop that paper over one last time. Number three, rear lamp. It's that easy. It's really nothing to this. Um, so let me go ahead and um, I'm going to go ahead and jerry rig up the battery again since I don't have that fuse. I'm going to go ahead and put my handy dandy vice grips back on here. And I'm going to show you how now everything being tied in, how everything cranks up and how everything starts. So give me a second to get the battery set up. All right, fellow YouTubers, make fun if you will. That's fine. Chuckle all you want. I don't care, because guess what? For the time being, it works. <laughs> Vice grips. Yes, not the ideal choice for connecting wires. Testing purposes, works perfect. All right, remember I told you. Ground strap. Ground strap's tied into the console. Console goes to the frame. There's your ground. I went ahead and I tapped these threads, so that way when I went ahead and put this bolt in here, um, everything has got a good ground to it. So again, you have one area. See, it's got that little chamfer in it. And see how that's straight right there? Take that chamfer end, put that chamfer end down. The reason is, it helps it guide onto that post. I have not cleaned these posts off. So I'm not going to force these all the way down yet because see how these are a little boogered up? So I'm not going to shove it down because that's from the old battery terminals that used to be on there. So... You know, in case anybody's wondering too, let me show you the number of what this battery is. Battery I got for batteries uh, in bulbs. There's the battery I'm using, six volt battery. Um, wasn't much, I think it was like 80 bucks for the battery. And it's a door cell. Pro, works good. I haven't had a problem out of this battery so far. Again, six volt battery. I know you can go with an eight volt battery on these tractors. It doesn't really hurt anything. Helps it spin over a little bit faster. So if you decide to go with another battery, go with the eight volt. Um, but honestly, unless you're in really, really cold conditions and it, it places where your battery's going to die, that six volts going to do you fine. Mm. And I did order my clamp finally for my muffler. <laughs> so that way this thing will actually sit straight. I opted not to go ahead and put a stack on here only because of the fact of this particular tractor isn't going to be out in the rain. It's not going to be sitting out. It's not going to be driven in the rain. I don't need a rain stack on this one. If it sits in here too long to keep stink bugs and stuff out. 
I'll actually go ahead and make some kind of, or find some kind of rubber cap that I can put over top of it. It's just like putting in that boat plug. You don't want to put in a boat plug, get out in the water, and all of a sudden have uh, the stern of your boat dipping down that water because you've got to plug the damn thing and you can't bail that water out. Well, same thing. Make sure you have a reminder to pull that cap off of there because if you don't, guess what? It ain't starting. All right, and no, I've never had the issue of me forgetting my boat plug. Whenever I took my boat out, that damn boat plug either was hooked to my keychain or that boat plug was um, somehow in my door pocket where I could see it right there in my handle. When I go to open or close that door, my boat plug was there. I had never had, now I did have a family member who forgot to put the boat plug in. And if you would have seen that fool coming back as fast as he can with that Carolina skiff dipping down the water. And as he's holding on that tiller drive, trying to drive it, and he's trying to bail water with a cutoff bleach bottle, that is some funny shit. No, I have never done that. All right, let's get back again, back on track. All right, so I have the wire that's going to go ahead and be for the fuse clamped together temporarily with a pair of vice grips. That's completing that circuit right there for me. Your starter wire is the same way. So you got a chamfer and then you got a flat end. Put that chamfer down. So let's go ahead and turn this terminal this is extremely difficult i'll tell you if anybody has not done youtube videos trying to do shit with one hand it's not easy but we do what we can do to make sure everybody gets as much knowledge as we have all right and let's go ahead and click it once that right there is going to be what they consider i believe dim you have off you have dim you have bright o d b so apparently on the dim, it brings on the rear light. I'm not sure if exactly if it's supposed to do that, but I'll find out. You know what? If anybody knows, let me know. Because um, this is how it was when I got the tractor. Same way. When you click to the first switch, the rear light came on. Normal brightness. The headlights come on dim, as you see. You click this one more. Right there. That should be now for B. B is going to be bright when I hook that up. We're going to come on over here, and as you see, the headlights are now bright. So that's actually how that works out. So give me a second, and I'm going to turn the lights off and actually show how this works, or how bright it is. All right, it's going to get spooky in here. There we go. As you see, the lights are pretty bright. Um, again, that's a six-fold system. Um, that's plenty of brightness that what we need for this tractor. Like I said, it's not going to do any nighttime plowing or anything else, so it's not like you need it super bright, but, I mean, you can't argue and say that that's not bright, because that's actually pretty damn good. So, let's go ahead and turn the lights back on. So, we'll go ahead and turn the switch back off. One, two, and then we're off. And let's come on over here. And I'll go ahead and, obviously, no fuel system hooked up. It's not going to start. I did go ahead and replace the um, starter switch and everything on here as well. But, as you see, it starts beautiful. See? It's got plenty of power to it. Cranks over nice. Cranks over smooth. Starter works good. That's pretty much it. Um, like I said, my next video is going to be going ahead and hooking the fuel system up. The reason I didn't make that my next video, like I said on the last video I was going to do, is because I had actually people question me a little bit more in depth about the wiring harness. Hopefully, my explanation of showing how to follow the diagram um, helps out. If anybody has a question also from Steiner, this is actually the switch that I use for the on-off style. Make sure you get it for if you have a direct ignition or a mag. And as you see, this says mag style because I'm running a mag. See, this is the difference between the mag versus having either a coil mounted on here on the top or having a remote coil like this one originally. Somebody bypassed it and it had the coil hanging over here, bolted to the fuel tank mounts and the coil was just hanging. Yeah, I didn't like that. So I went ahead and I replaced that. Um, for those who don't know what a coil is versus a bag, I have no problem walking over here. Let me disconnect this actually because I don't like leaving battery terminals partially on when it's not making a good contact because if you end up having a very weak connection, that can actually cause resistance. Resistance causes heat. Heat can cause a fire. So I only hooked that up just a little bit just to show how it works, but I didn't want to leave it because that can actually create a problem. 
But anyway, there's a coil. So for the people who don't know the difference between a mag or a direct ignition, which is a coil, that's what that is right there. That's a coil. And again, you got to make sure that when you get these, you're supposed to get these for 6 volt. Um, this one's been all scraped off, so I have no clue what this was for. Doesn't matter, because this tractor here didn't start when I got it anyway. Um, number two and number three cylinder was completely filled up with water. Um, the valves were completely rusted. Um, lock solid, the valve train was locked solid. I have actually, again, excuse the mess on the bench. I haven't had a chance to get out here and do anything. Um, there's one of the pistons, there's one of the sleeves. I mean, you can see the rings and everything. Oil, look at the oil ring. If I even would have got this tractor started, if I would have got this engine, you know, freed up and had this moving, that would have just literally tore and gouged the um, the cylinders completely. Some of these in here, it was like uh, the wrist pin and all was completely locked up solid. It looked like piles of popcorn stacked up inside there. It was rust and white rust all built up. So even if this tractor would have started, it basically just would have tore itself up. I mean, you can see the valves. I mean, this was, they, they were just rusted solid. You couldn't even get the valves to move. Um, so a lot of times when you see a lot of these people saying, yeah, just throw a little bit of uh, Marvel in there, throw a little bit of PV Blaster in there. You know what? You may get that engine freed up and you may get it finally spinning where you can spin that fan and you can move those cylinders and you're like, hey, hey I'm good. It's fired up. Guess what? There was so much damage created by all that water sitting in there and destroying everything. Even if you would have started up, eventually this thing would have lost so much compression. It probably would have even barely pulled, um, you know, a small... 4 by 8 trailer, you know, empty. It probably wouldn't have had enough power to get out of its own way. So just because you get a motor spinning over after it's been seized up with water, doesn't mean those rings and the oil rings are going to come back to life. Most likely they're probably going to tear those cylinders up. This one sat for about 10 years um, with the original exhaust opened up and it just, with those valves, the one being fully open, number two, and the other one being a little bit, it just filled those cylinders completely up full of water. It didn't seep through to the pan. I only had a little bit of water in the pan, but the cylinders and the head was done. Um, you can go back through, see some of my videos. I showed some pictures of what they look like. Um, if you follow my videos all the way to the end, um, some of the beginning videos after I got past the steering, you'll actually see that. Um, and again, the steering is a whole nother video. If you want to find out how I got the steering so tight, <laughs> I mean, this, uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I talk about my steering, my front end on every single video because you know what? Getting inside that housing and fixing that uh, sector shaft and fixing those gears, world of difference on the front of this tractor. I could take and spin this steering wheel almost three quarters to a full turn one way and the same the other way before these wheels thought about turning. A lot of people think it's, you know, the little tie rods. No, it's not always tie rods. It's inside that shaft because what happens is the sector shaft, the bearing's bad. So the sector shaft moves up and down. The arm right here will actually move up and down. And then with the slop that you have inside here, when you combine all that together, it makes the steering awful on these tractors. If you go back through my beginning videos, you'll see how I actually repaired this. And honestly, me putting weld on the end of the sector shaft and actually tightening up this center arm um, made a night and day difference. When I turn this wheel, this thing moves perfectly back and forth versus before when I used to turn it. It used to come up and hit up here and turn it the opposite way. It would come down and hit down here. I have no play in it at all anymore. People have taken soda cans. You've cut shims, stuff like that, and you can put shims in there. Yeah, you can do that, but eventually, guess what? It's just it's a soda can. You're going to just keep on smashing those shims down. Eventually, it's not going to do anything. You can pretty much smash through those. I weld at the ends of the shaft. I ground them, and I basically fit this arm to that sector shaft, fix the problem, and guess what? It's done. It's metal. Welded to metal. It's good to go. It ain't going to have an issue anymore. Because um, this thing is never going to see enough hard use to be able to wear that out that, that bad anymore. Um, the only other thing I noticed, putting on bigger tires. Maybe I'm missing something. I don't think I am. I checked, and obviously inside this arm right here, this bolt actually goes in. This is actually a pointed bolt. It actually is like an alignment bolt. It goes in and hits into a hole in here, which is what locks this together. So that way, eventually, they don't start spinning against each other. Um, I was going to go ahead and loosen that up and try to spin this a little bit to get a little bit more clearance between the tire. You can't do that. Um, obviously, it's never going to hit. But you see how close that is? And I went with a bigger size tire, and this is actually the biggest tire they recommended for the Super A. 
I wanted bigger tires. I wanted a little bit thicker, a little bit more of a stance to it. Let me come over here where it's brighter, and I'll show you what size I have. Um, yeah, so these, I believe, yeah, these are the 15 fives. I think it was 15 fours on here before. This side over here isn't as close. That side over there is closer. Like I said, it's not going to rub. It's not going to hit. Um, I was just trying to see if I can move that over a little bit more, but it doesn't seem to want to adjust. Um, back tires, I did have actually somebody in one of my last videos ask what size back tires I ran. Um, these are the Crop Masters. Um, haven't cleaned these up since I got them, but these are the 11.2 by 24s. I got these from a gentleman on eBay, um, I believe. I think they were about $400 for the pair of them, and that was free shipping. Um, bought the tube separately, and the worst part, if you watch one of my other videos, the worst part was dismounting those old tires. They sucked. Um, it was a pain in the ass. I knocked the camera over and everything. Putting the new tires on, very simple. Make sure, though, when you do them, watch for where your rim mounts are inside there. Make sure that when you're mounting these tires, make sure you mount them correctly on those rims because it's very easy to mount them both the same way. One's going to be the wrong way when you mount on the tractor. I didn't do that. I was very thorough to make sure I got these mounted the right way. So as you see, because somebody, I think, saw them when I had them sitting in my shop, and they're like, um, it looks like you mounted those the same way. No, I didn't. And as you see, they're on the tractor as I had them mounted. They're the right direction. So it's just a little tip. Watch that very carefully when you mount those. Because the last thing you want to do is have to dismount the tire and the tube after you're done put them in. Um, that's it. If you have any questions on the wiring, feel free to ask. Um, if there's something that I may have missed that you want to know, um, I'll do my best to answer for you. Make sure you ask me. So, as always, I appreciate if you can hit that notification bell. Any more videos I put up, which is going to be a lot, especially when this H comes in. Um, feel free to ask. One more thing I actually do have to tell you is... The lift arm, as you see, big unit right here. This actually mounts directly to the fender. I have a little um, little product I'm actually getting ready to make that actually a few people with these A's, with these arms, might actually be interested in. So I'm going to go ahead and get those worked, um, you know, and get all the kinks out of them and get them made up, and I'm going to show you and uh, see what you all think. Um, but if you want to see more about that, you got to hit that notification bell. So if you hit that, hit subscribe and like, comment you know what if you can share my video out that's awesome i appreciate it because you know what i thoroughly enjoy working on these tractors i thoroughly enjoyed prepping i you know love my solar um you know what honestly if i could just stay on my own property work on my own tractors deal with my own solar grow my own garden i'm happy i'd rather not have to go anywhere but unfortunately this is life we got to make money right so we have to go places so if you go back through my beginning videos, you're going to see how ugly this tractor was when I got it. It was a beauty, but it was ugly in the same sense. It um it needed a lot of work. But you know what? I'm fine with that. I like doing the work. I enjoy it. It's fun going from what it was to what it is now. It was worth. Uh, basically, I wire-wheeled this whole damn thing. Um, I wire-wheeled everything on this tractor. I got I used anything from fine wire wheels. Let me see if I got a bunch of them really already. I have drawer full of different sizes. I used all kinds of wire wheels to get in every single little crevice. And you know what? They, nothing says you worked hard until about two months later. You're still picking pieces of wire wheel out of certain clothes, socks, shit like that. Where it literally just feels like you were standing in front of a porcupine. And the son of a bitch, you know, farted when he sneezed. And he just shot you full of needles. That's about what it feels like. But you know what? To get pricked by those little needles makes it worth it when it comes out to that so yes it sucks but you know what put a little extra time into it because you can slap all the paint on you want but if you don't do a good job of getting that thing prepped and getting everything out guess what it doesn't matter how good your paint looks you're going to see all the crap underneath the uh the h <laughs> the h is going to see the crap underneath because i'm going to just sand that down lightly and i'm going to do a paint job on that one but i'm not going to take it down to as far as i took this one um because that one's going to be more of the workhorse. This is more of the showpiece. Um, but yeah, like I said, appreciate it. Go back through the videos. See what I did. Check it out. If you have any questions on anything I did, shoot me a message. I don't mind talking about it. But as I always say in my other videos, don't be an ass. Don't say, you know, shitty. You know what? We're all dealing with all these issues in the world. But you know what? 
this is what we have in common. That's why I'm making the video and that's why you're watching the video because this is what we share. So keep our comments to this, keep our topics to this, right? So enough of my rant, enough of my going on. Um, again, so hit that notification bell, like, subscribe, share, comment. I love talking about it. Let me know what's going on um, with your tractor. Let me know if there's something I did here that I could help you with um, all the way down to the Cerakote. Let me know because this is Cerakoted too. This is actually Cerakoted in a high heat, air cured black. Um, I had to look at the bottle. I can't remember which it was I used, but graphite black Cerakote on the valve cover. I didn't want everything sprayed all red. Um, I think it looks good this way. So that's it for today. Um, thank you for watching and look forward to uh, having you watch my next videos. Thanks a lot.